please confirm to us. Did you quit music? Yes. Life has been a bit tough. Dikarudi nyuma kidogo, dealing with some things. So see ati nime nimepotea Nico, but just what is in store for us now? Guys, I'm meeting Patricia for the first time. I've been seeing you on TVs back then. I've wow. been following you on social media. You're doing amazing. Thank now you're here as an official MC for Medica London Hair. What is the feeling now to see you? For the first, for the experience, and then for the launch. Um, uh -uh. as you can see, uh -uh. Uh -uh. I got my first hair installation ever, and this hair speaks. Once I, it was done last night. And once it was, I, I just felt transformed, like, wow, kumba even do you This is how people feel. Um, and I think it's such an exciting, exciting, innovative thing to have a, a, um, an app, to launch an app. I think for me, what I feel and I get from Mediga London is that it's not just about wigs, it's not just about hair. It's about, like, wanting to feel a little different, wanting to feel to explore a different side of you. It's not that you don't think your hair is nice and you're trying to cover it. It's just allowing you to explore different versions of yourself. Um, and they use such quality hair. And now that you have an app where they're trying not to just sell or make their units available, but to create a community of salons, you know, so people can find hair practitioners easier. I think that's such a beautiful thing. So I feel really privileged to be here. You've mentioned this is your first time you're having a wig. It's not my first time having a wig. It's my first time having an installation of this kind with like glue and like it's sitting HD lace. Not less nini. What is stopping you? I mean, unadua mimi. I shave my head and then Mara I have braids, Mara I've colored my hair. I've worn wigs here and there. That's fine. <laughs> I've worn wigs here and there. Um, but again, not this not this kind of wigs. Um, quality wigs, yes, but you know, from a much cheaper price point because it's wanting to have fun, wanting to change up a look. Um, this is the first time I've actually had hair like this. Um, and I opted to do something that people would not expect because when I got there they wanted to do the natural because I'm like, mm, I want to do something different so yeah no from your, from your point of view what makes Medica London hair unique and stand out from the rest I think aside from the quality of bundles that they use and the techniques that they use to create their units I think what I really value about Medica London is that Barbara the owner when you go to the studio to get an installation done, a lot of people don't even realize that it's her who's actually working on you. Yeah, no, you just a lot of people who are men on Afkiria too, it's, she's just another person at the studio. Mm -hmm. Oh no, she's the owner. So she's very hands-on. It feels like a family, whether or not you're a client, whether or not you're part of the business. And and that was a feeling that I got even in this engagement, that it's a very family-oriented um, brand and business and that for me was super valuable and special. Okay. Uh, Barbara has managed to pull out top influencers, media personality. This is an amazing uh, launch now. What is the game changer? Sorry, ask that again? Barbara has managed to brought out media personality influencers for this medical London hair now. Is this, will this be the game changer in the industry? I think there's room in the industry for very many players because everybody is unique and everybody brings their own brand of, of, of what it is that makes them them to the table. So yes, it's a game changer in that she's bring, it's, I mean, an app is innovative. It's, but it's also a game changer in the sense that here's another brand and business that's been in the, it's been in, in the space for like, what, like a year and a half now? This is not a new brand, um, but I think it's just creating more room for people to thrive, for people to, to bring value to the space. And I think the reason so many people showed up for the event is because she's, she's fostered that feeling of family, so people showed up for her. Yeah. First impression matters a lot. What do you focus now more on when you step out, when you leave your house, when you're going for meetings, events? I love to be comfortable. <laughs> I also love to wear things that I like. Um, but I also love to wear Kenyan and African brands. Um, so this 
suit was made, it was custom made for me by a brand called Purple Thread. Um, I was introduced to the tailor, Charles, um, on Monday this week. He came to my house 3 p.m., took my measurements. Yesterday, Wednesday, he brought the suit for a fitting. Actually, Wednesday evening, I town. I was at the fabric and I took a picture and I said, eh, uh -huh, mm, uh -huh. Tuesday, Subui, he went back, more fabric, mm, that one. And by yesterday, he brought for the fitting and then we made some adjustments. And today, I had it by noon and it fit perfectly. So I love, I love made in Kenya, made in Africa, just because we, we, we have dope stuff. Yeah. Our, our, our local designers, I can say entrepreneurs, they're not recognized that much. We've seen recently our president, even the other day was looking lovely in a Maasai outfits. Recently our president was wearing counter sword by local designers. Should we impress our own? Should we buy our own? Of course. Of course. And I don't mean that we should exclusively buy our own. Of course you're free to like buy the brands that you like, whether international or not. But always remember that what we have here is just as good. We have wonderful designers, wonderful craftsmen who can make amazing items. So I think there's a there's some people who still believe that I if I want something good, lazima ni nwek to import it. That's not true. People have leveled leveled up. They're doing amazing things and hey, Kwanza Prezo, he should be like number one wearing just Kenyan, Kenyan, Kenyan brands. Because yeah and I think anybody who can, I think for a lot of people you just don't know where to find also or, but that's a, a gap that needs to be bridged where people know where to access these brands and also these brands have space to, to reach the people who would, you know, provide business. And that, just to add on that, uh, we saw Itakode uh, made a post the other day uh, asking our president, William Samoa Ruto, that he should organize maybe a specific day for us Kenyans to celebrate our culture. A specific day in a calendar for Kenyans to celebrate our, all our, our members of parliament, CS, uh, government uh, dignitaries to wear our own African Kenyan. Yeah, I love that. I love that. First of all, I, Akothe is, I, I love the bold woman that she is. And that is such an amazing, that's such a great point. I think it should be not just one day, it should be more often until it's just the norm for us to prioritize our culture before any other. Can you imagine, like, it, it becomes more like a, ah, in Kenya, bono in fact, kuna mtu Kenya nafana kama hii, lakini nzuri kuliko hii. You know, like, if we can repeat that, repeat that until it's such an inbuilt, ingrained thing in us to know and believe in ourselves and believe that we are capable capable of producing amazing things. We are capable of, we are, okay, so is on point, and then now we can do it even more than once, just mm -hmm. multiple times. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about now entertainment and showbiz. Mm -hmm. People are asking, your fans are calling, people are saying that maybe you wanted a break, maybe to focus on other things. Mm -hmm. Maybe you left the scene for good. Please confirm to us, did you quit music? Guys, I sing every day of my life. I think, <laughs> I think for a lot of, um, for a lot of time, being an artist looked like you had to do it a certain way. I think for me, a lot of times people would ask me, oh, how do you balance this, this, this and that? And I realized it's not about balance, it's about harmony. So sometimes you're doing one thing and then you do that one thing and then your season in nation of anengine your season in nation of anengine there's no permanent hard stop right and so when i'm not as active in maybe one thing that people know me for it doesn't mean that nimenyamaza i think over the last 3 years though yes eh kwanza with the pandemic life has been a bit tough dikarudi nyuma kidogo dealing with some things but at the same time it doesn't mean that the, and like my creative endeavors stopped, they just started looking. It's just different things, and I think that's always been the story of my life. It's like there's always just a new door opening, and yeah. So, siati nime nimepotea Nico, but just. What is in store for us now? In store for you? God's for blessings. <laughs> um, you know, I really don't know. I don't know. Today, let me say today. 
I don't know how to answer that question, but there are things I'm working on. Series, reality. Series. Um, um, Studio music school? Eh? Nini? A, a music school? I know. Mimi ni fudisha mziki. Mimi si your experts. Ah, mimi. In fact, I would go to the school. I would go to the school. Maybe I'd go to the school as a student. <laughs> but like, there's a lot happening, I think. When I sit down and just... Zina, they're cooking. They're cooking. Mm. But I'm excited, Pia. You're excited for it. Okay, even us will be excited to see. Now, we saw you video vixen. You've been once a video vixen for Saudi Soul. The Safari song. You're looking lovely. I know you have a close relationship with Saudi Soul. Their last show is coming up. Maybe share with us. You being close friend to Saudi Soul, their <laughs> journey, what will you miss out? And maybe a message to them. Uh, I love them so much. I recently actually caught them in Amsterdam. It was so beautiful. I think there's something really special about also like um, getting to enjoy our artists outside of the country. It's like you just appreciate them more. <laughs> I remember the first time I went to Tanzania years ago. I love Funili Kwa Kwa Club Fulani in Kaskia Red Sun. And I was just like, Red Sun is Kenyan! Because this is like maybe 20 years ago, you know? And I think my love for Saudi Soul runs deep. I have gone to many of their shows. I have followed them across like to other countries just to watch them um, when I could um, and I think I respect them so much because as individuals they're also stars in their own right um, I don't think this is the end for them um, I just think it's like just they're exploring other facets of themselves and allowing themselves to be who they are outside of this beautiful thing that they built and created and this community of fans around the world that love them. And so, yeah, we'll be there. I don't think it's their last show like you need. Not that, I don't think, I'm not saying that I think they're lying. I'm just saying, who knows, in five, ten years they could be like, guys, we have a show. Like for me, I'm just optimistic in that way. And I appreciate them for all the years of music, beautiful music that they've given us. Yeah. What is one thing you've learned from them, maybe you can share with us? Um, bravery to, to explore the different sides of who they are. Yeah. Lastly, there's a lot of happening to our public figure celebrities. Mm. When it comes to online trolling, online bowling, having their families online, they're being trolled. You know, recently we saw some photoshops, crazy conversation going online. Now, a message to the public figures. If you can advise them maybe to keep their family off social media, will you recommend that maybe in the future? I don't know if I have any advice to give. <laughs> I don't think of myself as a social media expert. And I think for me, like social media began when it was not even like a thing that you make money from, so do content creation. It was just a place where you just express yourself, you share, you connect with family who may be abroad. And I think, I don't know, like I, I, I don't even know if I have the words to, to quantify what social media has become. It, the, on, the, on the plus side, it's, it's, it's a wonderful tool. But on the negative side, it's, it can also be like a tool for you know, hurting people, so, I don't know, I, I can't tell somebody don't put your family and I can't tell somebody do this or do that because I'm also like figuring out my own relationship with social media, but I think maybe what I would say is just remember to stay true to yourself because then that way, even if they are trolls, it's as long as you're true to yourself, yeah, yeah, it needs yeah. Then that's fine. Come on, oh, na kilo na post ni sao. Thank you so much for speaking to us, and uh, thanks for having us. Ni mionge mboka ta lips zime kauka manse. Hey, it's after vastly namanini, but hey, wow. It was nice having you. Thank you so much. This was nice.